Hello, welcome to Gabby's Revision Channel. In this video, I will be covering context in The Great Gatsby. This is the contents page. This is what I will be covering in this video. If you scroll down below to the comment section, I have put down all of the time codes for each bullet point. So you'll be able to be directed to whatever point you want to view. So we'll start off with F. Scott Fitzgerald, the author himself. His family was upper middle class and was related to Francis Scott Key, the writer of the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner, the national anthem. He spent much of his childhood in New York. He moved back to St. Paul when he was 12 because he was financially struggling and he felt like a poor boy in a rich world. This is kind of similar to Gatsby because he was a imitation of old money and being surrounded by everyone else who is actually old money like Daisy Buchanan, Tom Buchanan, he's quite isolated. So F. Scott Fitzgerald felt inferior and was fascinated by the rich and also criticised them in his writings. So that's similar to Gatsby as well because Gatsby was obsessed with money, like went that, like for example with the quote, um, for example his American dream was Daisy, but Daisy is old money and then there's a quote that says her voice was full of money so that kind of shows his true intentions for wanting Daisy because he wants to be part of um, the elite and have old money. His rich aunt also helped him get into Princeton University, a well-established university. Zelda Fitzgerald, his wife, she was a wealthy daughter of the established elite, so old money as well, whose father was an Alabama Supreme Court judge. The couple were engaged to be married in 1919, but she broke off as he was neither rich nor famous. Only after Fitzgerald became more successful, having had, a manu having had manuscripts accepted for publication in 1920, did Zelda finally marry him. That reflects the um, attitude of Daisy in The Great Gatsby as she is terrified of Gatsby after finding out that he is a bootlegger and has no ascribed wealth. Also in the um, Jack Clayton film interpretation of The Great Gatsby, the black and white version, um, Daisy also says, rich girls don't marry poor boys. Zelda herself reflects Daisy a lot and also a quote that she said in real life was used in The Great Gatsby uh, and it was used by Daisy when she says when she says about her child i'm glad it's a girl and i hope she'll be a fool that's the best thing a girl can be in this world a beautiful little fool so that kind of shows their views on women and the um lack of opportunities that she wants for her child um settings and imagery uh west egg uh this is where new money was so like nick's house gatsby's mansion um, East Egg is old money, it was where the elites and where the people have ascribed wealth, so Daisy and Tom. Dr. T.J. Eckelberg. Dr. T.J. Eckelberg is a billboard advertisement. Um, it is a pair of glasses with disembodied blue eyes and with yellow spectacles. The billboard is also fading out, as you can see, due to paintless days, as it says in the book. And it represents God and the death of the American dream. And it's in the middle of the Valley of Ashes. This is quite symbolic of the time because if it's fading away and if it's supposed to represent God, then it shows the lack of morality during the time because there was a lot of like organised crime and immorality going on. Dan Cody, he was one of um, Jay Gatsby's aspirations and role models. He earned his fortune through mining copper and was a millionaire who gave James Gats Gatsby's original name, the name Jay Gatsby, and he taught him how to be like one of the elite. And the Valley of Ashes, um, this is centred in the middle of um, West Egg and East Egg, where the waste from the city is dumped, it is watched over by Dr. T.J. Eckelberg, and the people in the Valley of Ashes, such as George and Myrtle, do not get to experience a prosperous lifestyle like others in the Roaring Twenties. George is kind of represented as dull and um, lifeless. There's lack of colour in his descriptions, compared to like um, in West Egg, and East Egg, there's a lot of colour when they go to the city or in Gatsby's mansion there's like loads of like vibrant colours and vibrant settings going on. Main characters, Daisy Buchanan, she is old money, uh, she went to Tom as he can provide for her and the lifestyle that she wants. 
and because she's a beautiful little fool, she was e um, easily attracted by um, Tom. So that gives her the careless lifestyle and um, irresponsibility that she wants. So it just shows that there's lack of opportunity for women. Tom Buchanan, he is a polo player. Um, polo is sometimes known as the sport of kings and that just shows how he wants to be on top of the social hierarchy all the time and gets um, affected if people try to um, climb the social ladder like Jay Gatsby. He also has racist views and Myrtle is his mistress. Jay Gatsby, his real, name's, his real name is James Gatz. Um, he has conspicuous consumption. That is a Marxist term to describe how the rich display their wealth through materialism. Gatsby's lifestyle creates a facade to portray him as old money, such as his mansion, his parties. Like, for example, in the book, um, Jordan Baker says Gatsby bought that house so he could be across the bay from Daisy. He really emphasises um, old money through his appearance to create the illusion. Nick Carraway, he went to Yale University with Tom Buchanan and he said that everyone hated Tom Buchanan um, by the time they finished Yale. And yeah, it's a well-established university as well. The Emancipation of the Slaves. Um, it was the abolishment of slavery where black people were forever free and no longer had to work in the deep south in abusive conditions. Slaves were used in the southern states for their economic industries such as tobacco and cotton. African Americans moved from the rural south to the major cities of the northern states in search for a new life and more opportunities. So that indicates attitudes of the American dream. And before the emancipation of the slaves, anyone in the northern states were considered as free. The vast majority remained poor and un underprivileged. Tom Buchanan, um, he's very prejudiced and discriminates others who aren't like him, such as Gatsby or uh, black people. He makes an allusion to the rising tide of colour, but gets the title wrong and refers to it as the rise of the coloured empires, which is wrong because it's actually this. And that kind of reveals that he is ignorant. The modernist period, during the early during the early twentieth century, new styles appeared in literature. Literary modernism tended to deal with topics that were controversial and also to experiment with new forms that often posed a real challenge to new to readers. Um, they had more of a forward-thinking attitude and questioned um, the societal norms. F. Scott Fitzgerald used a few conventions from the modernist movement found in The Great Gatsby. Um, for example, long sentences reflected the unstructured flow of thought. Oh, also, allusions and metaphors were quite new and were a contemporary convention. World War I. America was involved in the Great War from 1917 onwards. American losses were light compared to Europe, which suffered deaths in millions. However, everywhere there was disillusionment about the glorification of war. Um, the effects of the war in America were the lost generation. This, was, this term was coined by Gertrude Stein and came to be used to describe the young people who had become adults at the time of the war. The phrase reflected the feeling that this generation had lost its direction and sense of purpose. Fitzgerald also expressed his feeling that the energy and intense readiness for action anticipated by his peers was not expended by the war and thus needed to find outlet in the extremes of the 1920s jazz age, although this reflects his own experience. The Jazz Age and the Roaring Twenties The Jazz Age was a period in the 1920s and 1930s in which jazz music and dance styles rapidly gained national popularity, for example the Charleston Dance. The 1920s dawned on an America ready for peace and prosperity. The evil of war had been defeated and the next great threat in Europe was not yet visible on the horizon. A booming stock market contributed to a huge growth in consumer spending as investors saw their wealth on paper soar. America became a consumer society. The American lifestyle became more wealthy and everyone became more successful and richer meaning there was a lot of reckless spending during this time. Organised crime, the prohibition, which was the abolishment of alcohol, um, it was abolished because of the it was abolished because the consumption of it was against God's will and many agreed that it was wrong for some Americans to consume it and enjoy it while the country's young men were at war and this raised the morality in um, America. The effects of it were, for example, 
100,000 speakeasies in New York City alone. Speakeasies were illegal drinking dens that were secretive and were where anyone could just secretly drink. It just led people to do the opposite of what it, it was intending. So they had to so they had to end it in 1933 due to failure. Bootlegging also created fortunes for gangsters such as Al Capone or Al Capone, a well-known gangster from Chicago. Gatsby was also a bootlegger. He had um, organized crimes going on in Chicago. Bootlegging helped him create the illusion of becoming old money and helped him be able to afford all of the um, items to create the illusion. Fitzgerald was an alcoholic which contributed to his death from a heart attack at the early age of 44. He would drink 30 bottles of alcohol a day. Um, Zelda also said in the letter, you were literally eternally drunk all summer. Um, another organised crime was the, um, the World Series, as Mayor Wolfsheim fixed the World Series. Um, the sports scandal in 1919, the Chicago White Sox baseball team took bribes and allowed the Cincinnati, I don't know how to pronounce that, Reds to win the World Series tournament. Um, the real life Mayor Wolfsheim, Arnold Rothstein, provided most of the money to fix the result. The American Dream. Um, the Declaration of Independence uh, on the 4th of July 1776 was where American colonies were no longer part of the British Empire. During the last quarter of the 19th century, the discovery of easily collected mineral ores caused prospectors to rush to make their fortune. The dream was to get rich quickly. A few like Dan Cody in this novel succeeded, but the reality was often disappointment and hardship. Another context point for this would be um, the California Gold Rush. Um, a lot of people went to California to get rich quick because there was a lot of um, gold if they did mining. The New Woman. This was the rejection of Victorian values and etiquette. Um, changing attitudes of strict and stereotypical societal values of women. Uh, you can use Judith Butler's gender trouble theory. Um, she argues that gender is performance and a social construction. Um, for example, there are there were, for example, during the Victorian um, period, there were assumed natural there were assumed natural gender roles for men and women. For example, men being the breadwinners and providers, versus the women being the mothers and the housewives. There was the emergence of the new woman, such as the flappers. They were liberated due to new technologies, which enabled them to have more time to themselves and become less committed to the traditional housewife role. They had short bob-like hair, wore relatively short clothing, sexually liberated, used makeup to make themselves more attractive, and smoked. Zelda Fitzgerald was a flapper. The Wall Street Crash, 1929, also known as Black Tuesday. This was when the stock market crashed and the economy was plunged into the Great Depression. This caused loads of people to become unemployed and estimated an estimated 13 million. Many people lived in primitive conditions close to famine and between 1 and 2 million people travelled the country desperately looking for work and this created a lot of Hoovervilles as well as during the time President Hooverville was in the office and Everyone blamed him for the Great Depression as there was little action being taken very quickly. And they were shanty towns made from scraps and the homeless people affected by um, the Great Depression just came together and tried to support each other. The economy didn't recover until the USA entered World War II in 1941 and stock prices did not reach the same level until late 1954. And to conclude, Fitzgerald's intentions for The Great Gatsby, um, he want, his intentions were to emphasise how 1920s America were corrupt due to the greed and selfishness of American people, to emphasise how these prosperous to emphasize how these prosperous lifestyles will make us irresponsible and strive for more despite it creating isolation, to emphasise the failure of the American dream as during the Great Depression, the American dream uh, became quite popular. The term was coined by James Truslow Adams in 1931. That was the early years of the Great Depression. And it just created a lot of false hope for those affected by uh, the Great Depression. America's decade of excessive spending. His intentions were also to emphasize that America's decade of excessive spending and wastefulness 
brought the exact consequences that Fitzgerald predicted, again, the Wall Street crash and the Great Depression. His novel was a warning sign, and the novel was published in 1924. So yeah, these are some good points. These are a few points you could add uh, when you are writing your essay for Fitzgerald's intentions for the novel, depending on what the question is. And yeah, that is it, guys. If you have any, if you have any more context points that I probably miss, please feel free to comment down below and help each other out. Yeah, I hope you guys do well in your exams. I'm wishing you all the best. Good luck, and see you guys next time. Bye.